So today is lesson two of intro to web programming. And we're gonna do a few things today. So today's kind of an important class. We're gonna look at how do we get connected? How do we connect up our PHP web application to our MySQL database? And we're gonna need that connection basically for everything we do the rest of the course. All, almost all of the interactions we do on our website are gonna involve using our, our database. In the, uh, in the video game, website that we, we voted on last week, and it was a very close, tight vote. Um, we're gonna look at how do we capture data from users using HTML forms, and you probably played around, you may have played around with HTML forms last semester um, in your HTML fundamentals class with Scott. Did you work with forms at all? Or would that be totally new for you? A little bit, okay. So it won't be totally unfamiliar, but we you wouldn't have really done the back end piece where we actually take that data and can save it to a database. So that's going to be new. So we want to get that working today. We want to be able to build a games entry page where we can enter values in a web form. And then we want to be able to save all that information to our MySQL database so it's there permanently. We're also going to uh, review how to use FTP to make sure we can load our PHP files on the server and also run our application live on the internet. If we have time today, we're also going to look at version control with Git. And if I remember correctly, last week we talked about Git and Git is still new for most people, correct? Just getting a bit confused between my different sections. But you guys said Git will be new. Okay. All right. Good. Um, one, thanks Colton and David, one brief thing before we start today. So the week one, the quiz on last week's class, so it was due yesterday at 5 p.m. Um, I only got five submissions for quiz one. So just so I want you to be in the habit, we're going to have these quizzes every week. They're always going to be due the following Tuesday at 5 p.m. as a review. No, the idea is it's due before today's class. So what I'll do as a one-time thing, I will reopen the week one quiz. Okay, I'll change the due date so you can still submit it. But the idea is that you do the review before you attend the following lesson. Okay, so I will give you a chance to redo last week's quiz. Um, it's in the lesson two folder, Colton, but I have to just make it uh, visible for you. Because I said display until yesterday at five. So I'm gonna change that to today at five. So if you refresh, yeah. So the week one quiz will be in the week two folder. And then the quiz for this week will be in the week three folder. Okay, so you do have until 5 p.m. to do it today, but you'll know when you go to do the week three quit, the week two quiz based on today's lesson, it's gonna be in the week three folder and it'll be visible until next Tuesday at five. Okay, uh, the other thing I just wanted to point out, most people have completed this little item, but there are still a few people who couldn't, you won't be able to see the week one review quiz until you complete, where is it? Um, oh, sorry, it's in last week's folder, the academic integrity pledge as well. So there's a few students who haven't completed this item in lesson one, the academic integrity pledge. So until you complete this, you won't be able to see quiz one. So, Colton, that could be the other possibility as well about not finding quiz two. Sorry, quiz one in the quiz two folder. Yeah, so make sure in the lesson one folder you have a look at the integrity pledge and agree to that. And then once you do, the week one quiz will show up here in the lesson two folder and you'll have until five o'clock today to do it. The quizzes are worth 10% of your overall grade and they're open book. So generally from seeing the quizzes, people are doing fairly well. 
So you want to make sure that you do them. Otherwise, you know, your maximum grade in the class is 90. It's not 100. So it's 10 relatively, you know, non-time consuming, fairly low stakes marks. So you want to be sure you complete the quiz each week to get as many marks as possible. It is also designed to review for you, you know, what, we're, what we did before the next week's lesson. Okay, so just before we, speaking of review, we just I want to do a quick review before we move into our process of saving data. Okay, so on Blackboard, I did create four breakout groups last week. You should be able to see them on Blackboard. I don't, I, I've got a link that says users and groups. I think yours just says groups. And if you go into your groups, it'll show you whether you're in breakout group one, two, three, or four. So what I'm going to ask is when I use breakout groups in the WebEx session, which we're going to do in a minute, um, if you can just join the group that matches your number. So you'll kind of work with the same breakout group most of the semester. Okay, so if you're in breakout group one, then when I start the breakout rooms, just move yourself into group one. So for example, group one is Chris, Ariel, Puneet, and Nafisa. So here's your activity. I'm gonna give you five minutes to do this in your breakout group. You can turn your mics on and use the chat. So all I want you to do is without looking at any of the material, talk about what you remember from last week's class. What did you learn about PHP? last week that you didn't know two weeks ago. So I'm going to give each group five minutes and then I'll ask you one person in each group just to dump your notes in the main WebEx chat when you come back. Okay, Whichever person in the group, whoever's first name is closest to the start of the alphabet, you're going to put your group's notes in the chat. Okay, so I'm going to give you five minutes. Just talk about what do you remember from last week? Okay, so I'm going to pause the recording and stop the sharing in the recording. So if your group can put your notes in the chat, what did you remember collectively as a group? from last week's class. Okay, so Colton said, keywords are not case sensitive. So you can type a while statement with a capital H and it would still work, but variables are case sensitive. So yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> but yes, variable names that they're case sensitive. PHP is really widely used. It's open source. It communicates with the web server and we use echo statements for output. So I'm gonna actually add these notes to Blackboard as well. And uh, Colton, which group number were you in? Four. Okay. So I'll add your notes here. There's some good review notes. Yep. Yes, you were group four. All right, thanks for those notes. Um, <laughs> okay, Miranda, you thought you, you were group four? All right, well, that's fine. I won't put the group numbers. Okay, so Ariel, you said, let's see what's here. Okay, so you remember some stuff about the syntax rules that we communicate with servers. We use variables. We can use it for simple websites. It's case sensitive, true. And it's compatible with HTML and JavaScript. All right, great. 
and Miranda, Michael, and Preston. I'm just going to paste in your notes as well because you also added some really important things from last week. So it has to work with a web server, right? We can't open the files directly. The PHP must be served by a web server that includes a PHP interpreter. It's flexible, so we can make changes compatible with different operating systems. Yep, open source. And some notes about our syntax. Right, scripts can go anywhere in the document. We use these opening and closing tags. Our files have to have a PHP extension and our files are typically gonna be, okay, thanks Miranda. Uh, files are gonna be a mix of PHP and HTML, right? So if I pull up a sort of a completed file from a project, the PHP project, I'll just pull one up from last year. So if we look at it in the code editor, we're gonna see a bunch of PHP, some HTML and then PHP. So it's kind of intertwined. So the code can be a bit messy because we're kind of going in and out. We can even see PHP tags injected inside of an HTML tag where we want dynamic content. So we have this sort of mix of uh, PHP and HTML tags. Okay, you guys remembered a lot of the key points, which is great. I'll just add those notes to Blackboard. So that we've got them here for future reference. I know my formatting is a bit messy. So what do we want to do today? We want to look at how do we capture data from the web and store it in our database. So the process looks like this. So typically, here's my lovely diagram. This is about the extent of my design skills, which is why I teach the programming classes. So we basically need three components to make this work. We need a form that you worked with a little bit in your HTML class. So the form is like our container to capture user inputs. Um, what would be some examples of common web pages you interact with every day that include forms? Oh, I thank you, David. That's my story, I'm sticking to it, avantgarde.io. So where would you see HTML forms? What would be some examples you interact with all the time on the web? Yep, so a login screen is a form, right? There's text inputs for a username and password, and then there's a submit button. Where else besides logins? would we be interacting with web forms? What website, what's the first website you go to every day? Either on your phone or when you turn on your computer? Oh yeah, uh, YouTube. Okay, and where's there a form on YouTube? Chris, you're right. Where's the form here? What form input do we give? The form lies in the cluster of the videos, I guess. Um, yeah, right here actually, the search bar, right? Here's a form. Yeah, the form, the search bar. Yep. And okay. yep. Go ahead. And you type it, and then a bunch of videos, related videos, pop up. Right. You got it. So the search is a form. Uh, so Ariel, you mentioned Facebook and Google. So how would they use forms? What kind of inputs are we providing? Keyboard. On... Sorry, Chris. We are using the keyboard. 
Yeah, we're using the keyboard, right. So we're searching, we're logging in. And then anytime yeah. you add a post, for example, on Facebook, you're interacting with a form, right? It's allowing us to add content. So the form is capturing our, you know, our photo, our video, our link, our text, whatever it is, whatever kind of input we're providing would be captured in a form. So when we're done putting in our inputs, we typically have a submit button and that form is gonna send the data to a page, another page typically, that uses some kind of server-side scripting language that can interpret the form inputs and process them. So that so we're gonna have two separate pages, one, one page to collect the data, one page to process the data, and then if the data is good, our processing page has got to connect to our database and save the information in there. Not always, if we're searching, we're not necessarily saving the data, but almost everything else we are. If we're adding a post, that post has to get saved, for example, to the social media database. So anytime we're collecting information from users, the process looks kind of like this in my beautiful avant-garde minimalist sort of way. So let's deconstruct this process a little bit more, okay? It's kind of like grocery shopping. Getting information from users, it's kind of like we go grocery shopping, right? In the grocery store, we need a bunch of food, so we need some container, we need a cart or a bin to hold all of the things we want. On a web page, if we want user inputs, we have a form, so the form's like the container that holds all the inputs we want to get from the users. So we collect everything in the grocery cart or in our form. We collect all, everything first, and then we go to process it when we're done collecting. So in the grocery store, we go to checkout. In our form, we click the submit button. Typically, there's a button at the bottom of our form. And then processing happens. So in the grocery store, it's got to process our payment before we can take our food and go home. Um, in the web, we've got a processing page that needs to check all the inputs, make sure everything is valid before we can ultimately save that information to the database. So our forms are invisible. You don't actually see an HTML form tag. There's no physical rendering that we can see in the browser, but all of our inputs, they have to live inside an opening and closing form tag. So you guys have probably worked with this a little bit. So things like registering for a website, there's a form. Filling out a review, there's a form. Making a comment, there's a form. Anytime we're asking users for any kind of input, we've got to give them a form to do it. So designing the form, um, we're going to open and close a set of form tags. And typically, we're going to use the post method in our form. Now, there are a couple of form methods. There's post and there's get. 99% of the time, we're going to use post. We'll experiment with them both today. So it's a little more clear as to why we want to use post most of the time. And then the page will have, we'll build our form on the first page. And our second page is going to process the form submission. And we're going to use PHP for that, so it has to have a PHP extension. And we'll add inputs for all of the things we want to get from users. And typically, there's a submit button at the bottom. So here are some of the com most common form controls. We've got text inputs, single line text inputs. We've got select boxes. So those are drop down menus where users can pick one item from a list. We'll work with these next week. We've got radio buttons, kind of similar to a drop-down list. Radio buttons uh, are typically when we only have a few choices. Drop-down lists are better when we have lots of choices and it would take up too much space to use radio buttons. We've got check boxes for Boolean fields, and then we have buttons. So form design, it's a little bit science and it's a little bit art. Right. We've probably all had the experience of users of working, trying to fill out a web form that's really hard to use. Um, so that's a good way to frustrate users and drive them away from our site. 
if we make our forms super difficult and complicated. So our form is then gonna submit our information to a PHP page, it's gonna check the inputs, and then it's gonna ultimately connect and save to our database. So this is partly, this is why you're taking this class, you're taking your relational database class at the same time, because all our PHP pages ultimately are gonna interact with the database. So we need to know how to build those and how to manipulate them with SQL. So how do we actually, what is this processing that happens here? What does this look like? So for example, if our form has a field called first name, we can get the value typed in by our user with the post array. This is built into PHP and it gives us access to all of the values the user entered in our form. And the syntax is dollar sign underscore post and then square brackets and single quotes and then whatever the name of the input is on our form. And typically, because this syntax is easier, typically we store those values in variables and then we can work with the variables. And then we wanna take these inputs and we wanna save them somewhere so we can work with that data, display it back later on. For example, if you add a post to the Facebook database, you're not adding it just so it can live on Facebook's server. You're putting that post in there so Facebook can retrieve it and display that post to other people. So typically when we're saving data to a database, it's because we wanna use that data somewhere else afterwards. So we're gonna to have to design a table in our database today. So typically our form kind of matches the table. Um, so we're gonna to have to figure out today to start building our games database. What does a game look like? What's all the information we need about a game? We're gonna build the table, a games table in the database. And then we're gonna build a game form that kind of matches it. If we have eight columns in the games table, we're gonna need eight inputs in the games form. So we will build a table shortly. We're gonna build a form that matches it. And then we wanna build the, write the code that can grab all the data entered by the user and save it to the database using an SQL insert command, which you may or may not have worked with yet in your database class. If you haven't yet, you will be working with them soon. Okay, so this is the process we wanna go through to do all this. Um, so the first thing we need to do, any questions about that process? These slides are on Blackboard as well for you to refer to at a high level later on. But does anybody have any questions about kind of the high level of the process before we actually start the actual building of this stuff? Okay, <laughs> that's good. So where do we start here? So where we need to start, first thing is, if ultimately we're gonna need our database, we need to figure out how do we connect a PHP page? How do we get it to talk to of the database? So there's an item here on Blackboard I want you to open up in the middle of the lesson two folder. It says connection exercise. So open this up. Um, Actually, I'm sorry. I don't want you to open it up that way. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry. You can open up the Word document. My apologies. Go ahead and open up this Word document. And click Enable Editing. So what we have here is all the code on a page that will connect, use PHP to connect to a database. But I've color coded it and each color is a different section. I've kind of mixed up the order of the code. So what I want you to do is take a few minutes on your own, I'll give you about five minutes to do this. You can message each other through the chat if you want. I want you to try and drag and drop these sections to put this page in the right order. 
and then we will compare all your, we'll compare the code and we'll kind of come up with the solution together in about five minutes. And then we can try the page out in a little while. Okay, so you can do this on your own. You can message a friend. I want you to unscramble the code and put this page in the proper order so that it will try to connect to our database using PHP. Okay, any questions about the exercise? Nope, not yet. All right, I'm gonna pause my recording and my screen share. I'll give you five minutes. So at 11.47, we will go over the solution together. Okay, let's try and solve this together. So which section or which color should go at the top of our file? What's first? You can use the chat or you can use your mic. Okay, thanks, Colton. Yep, the doc type is going to go at the top. So I'm going to move that up here. So that's the purple. Okay, thanks, David, Ariel, Colton. Okay, so then we want our opening HTML. So this is our orange tag. That's going to go next. What color would come after orange? Thank you, Tanya. Or probably Tanya, sorry. If I mispronounce your name, please correct me. <laughs> okay, so we've got kind of purple, orange, royal blue. What's next? Okay, yeah, we've got our title opening. So our title tag in kind of darker purple. And what would come after the title? All right, yep, so our bright green, our end heading, that's next. So th these first five sections are correct. What would come after we close the header? Yep, we'll take our black, our opening body tag, put it here. And what would we do next? So once we open the body, Thanks, Tanya. Okay, so we're going to take our yellow, kind of light orange. We want to open our PHP script tag. And then what is the first thing we do inside of our block of PHP code? What color? Very good, Ariel. Yeah. What's happening here? What is this gray section doing we've got a variable um yes david that's right so it's attempting to make a new connection to this server this particular database with this username and password so if it makes a proper connection, we'll have a connection in our variable called DB. This PDO, we'll talk more about it. PDO, it stands for PHP Data Objects. This is the library that lets a PHP page connect to a database. So we are making a new PDO connection with these credentials. So we're gonna try to make a connection here. So what color comes next after we try to make a connection? Yeah, the red if. So if we have no DB variable, that means our connection failed. 
right? And then we're going to print out a message. So what color would come after the red? You got it, Nafisa. Thank you. So we've got an if and else. So we're going to try to connect and then we're going to print out one of two different messages. If we have no connection from the attempt in gray, then this line is going to execute and our page is going to say could not connect. Otherwise, we're going to print this message. Okay, and then what color would come after the else? Yep, the null. So this is disconnecting from the database. And it's important we disconnect because we don't have an unlimited number of connections. The connections will time out eventually, but our rule is we only want to leave our connections open while we need them to work with the database. As soon as we're done, we want to disconnect, which makes that connection available for another user request. So it's about main, helping maintain performance on our website. Because if our server, let's say it allows a thousand connections, the 1,000 and first user that tries to request a page that needs our database, they're gonna, the page is gonna wait until the, there's a free connection. Okay, and what comes next? After we disconnect, Yep, then we can, thanks Ariel, we can close our PHP. And then down at the bottom, we have to make one more change. What's the last thing we need to do? Right, we're gonna move the body. So here's our full page. I'll just copy it in order. There it is in the chat. Okay. So what I'm going to do, we're about due for a break. Um, I'm just going to keep this page open. When we come back, we're going to save this as a PHP page. We'll need to put in our proper credentials, and then we can actually try the code and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to leave this up for now. If you didn't quite get it in the right order, the full code is in the chat for you. And it's 5 to 12. Um, Probably a good time for us to get out of our chairs. Go get fed and watered if you need it. Get some fresh air, whatever you need. We will resume at 12.05. We'll try this page out and see how it runs.